Hello everyone, this is Jesse from the Shuffle Bus, back here with a little different video than normal. Uh, we're going to be breaking down how to set up Tabletop Simulator for playing Ashes Rise of the Phoenix War. Also, spend a little bit of time going through some kind of quick tips and tricks to speed up uh, deck building, as well as the sort of in-game play experience, just to make it a little easier to manipulate everything. Um, this video might end up being a little longer. I'm not exactly sure how long it'll be, but uh, stick with me through it. Uh, I'm going to try to do a good job of putting some bookmark timers in for different sections. So if you sort of progress through it at your own pace, you have an opportunity to really pick up where you left off. Or if you forget something or want to review something after the fact, you can do so. So before we jump right in, I, I'm going to start by saying I, you need to download Tabletop Simulator from Steam. Um, the, it goes on sale quite a bit, so if it's not on sale and it's a little more expensive than you want to spend, just keep your eye out. It, it does go on sale pretty frequently. I think there was a Twitter account I followed at one point, might still have it followed. If I do find that, I will post it up, but it's, it's just like monitors, Tabletop Simulator specifically, and when it goes on sale, there's also a Tabletop Simulator Reddit group and it might not be a bad idea to join that community because they tend to let people know when Tabletop Simulator is on sale on Steam as well. And, well, you know, I think the Ashes community as a whole keeps a pretty good eye on it. You know, I would certainly recommend joining the Ashes Discord server. Um, there, there's lots of helpful people there. You're going to need to do that anyways to get the table file for that. So let's, let's start with, uh, you'll find that Discord link below as well as the Shufflebus Discord. You know, I'd love it if you wanted to join our Discord and have conversation. I'm happy to walk you through our Discord as well uh, in terms of uh, setting up Tabletop Simulator. But uh, it's just kind of a place for our community to interact and talk about the games we like to play. That's Marvel Champions and Fr Flesh and Blood and Ashes. And I'm going to be probably adding a few more games to that list here in 2021. So we're, we're ultimately a variety channel. We've just been really focused on Ashes as of late. Uh, if you enjoy this content and you want to stay up to date on other stuff that we're doing on the channel, you know, we'd love it if you'd subscribe. It's not expected. Uh, even hitting the thumbs up button, even if you don't subscribe, just tells us, hey, appreciate what you're doing and uh, lets us know that we're putting out the kinds of things you want to watch. Uh, and, you know, if you don't like something about this, let us know. Uh, definitely in the comments. Even if you like something about it, let us know in the comments. Chat with us. We, we like talking with all of you. So let's jump right into it. Save a bunch of time here. I'm going to. Um, show you kind of the basics of, of the file structure to begin with, because ultimately you're going to need to learn that file structure and it's going to be different on every machine. So if you're on a Mac, I apologize. I don't know what it looks like on a Mac. I do have a Mac. Maybe I'll do a Mac version of this video later on down the road and we can take a look at it and see what that sort of comes out like. But all right. <clears throat> so there, you, you can see here we've got, uh, I've just got my, my file explorer open. I have Tabletop Simulator installed. Uh, because my PC has an SSD drive for the boot drive, I've installed Tabletop Simulator on a separate drive. However, the core files still remain on the C drive, just a part of the program. They're not big, so they don't take up a ton of space on the hard drive, so it's not a big deal. There may be a way to change this in the settings. I have not done a ton of exploring on that part. I've sort of just lived with it. <clears throat> but you're going to want to look at your documents folder. Uh, this particular folder uh, will have uh, a file, another folder in it called My Games. That's the default install path here. And you can see that's where Steam uh, puts a lot of stuff that sort of gets installed from Steam. And so My Games, uh, Tabletop Simulator. And we've got a number of different things here, DLC, mods. Um, not going to do anything really with the mods, just, just a heads up on that. If you get into modding, uh, there's a lot more stuff you can do here. Um, and, you know, modding is a really fun part, especially if you're kind of into making games, which is something I'm super into. I love making games. You can see I've got a bunch of custom files here, as well as you can see I've got a bunch of Star Wars Destiny dice loaded in uh, from other mods that I was playing. There's also um, some Ashes files here. <clears throat> just various different things that you can use. but uh, again, don't don't spend any time here because this is really not necessary. I'm just showing you what kind of it is. 
we're going to live almost entirely out of the save files with Tabletop Simulator and Ashes. So in the save file, you'll see that I have this JSON file, 572 kilobytes. It's called Ashes underscore Reborn underscore TTS underscore 1.1 dot JSON. <clears throat> we need to save this JSON here. Um, and I'll show you where that pulls up when you're in um, when you're in the uh, the file browser inside a tabletop simulator when we load up tabletop simulator. <clears throat> Saved objects is where we're going to spend all of our time sort of saving decks. The, these are going to be where our decks are saved that we want to use. And so um, ultimately, you can create folders here if you want. You can see I've got a ton of folders. Probably need to do some cleaning up. I don't play Destiny any longer. Been a long time, as you can see, since 2017. Um, but, you know, I created a folder just called Ashes Reborn Deck specifically for the Ashes Reborn uh, series. And I loaded it up here. And so when you go in here, you'll see a number of JSON files saved here as well. Um, those JSON files are created in game. And I'll show you how to, to do that. So you know, as we get later on, you'll be able to save decks. I'll also talk about the pre-cons just a little bit here uh, when we when we get into the actual tabletop simulator file. So that's pretty much the main things you need to know. Again, my games, tabletop simulator, saves, saved objects, Ashes Reborn. If this, my games doesn't show up for you, I would just run a search in your file explorer for tabletop simulator because then you'll find wherever it's installed is where you'll find the save, saved objects, and then... Um, for me, I created the Ashes Reborn folder. You don't have to do that. If Ashes is the only game you play, you're perfectly fine saving all of your decks out here. They will load in, and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so we're going to jump over to Tabletop Simulator now, and we'll go through all of that. All right, in Tabletop Simulator. So this is the main uh, screen, the, the loading screen for Tabletop Simulator. Uh, there's configuration, tutorial, credits, and this is how you exit the game or unload the, the save. Um, I'm just going to start with the configuration for just a second because I want to show you some things uh, that might matter depending on your particular PCs. Tabletop Simulator is very uh, intensive on a lot of computers, RAM, uh, graphics processors, because ultimately Tabletop Simulator is kind of a physics uh, engine. It, it uses Unity and Unity's physics programs to be able to recreate real world environments like rolling dice or flipping cards or whatever it may be. And so graphics become a thing. I, I run in 4K, but that's just simply because I have 4K monitors. I would recommend you set this to your default, and I would make sure your preset quality is to custom. I would start working on trying different things here. Sometimes some PCs run better in window mode than full screen mode. Uh, V-Sync is just a way of controlling the resolutions, and that may be necessary if you have uh, some tearing issues or other things. Uh, I turn my MSAA down to 2x. Um, my PC is not super great. Uh, and so because I'm running at 4K, essentially Ultra HD, um, having the anti-aliasing be just a little softer, uh, not as, as sharp, is just a way to, to make sure that there's better, process, better performance overall. Um, Soft shadows, I, I keep unchecked. I'm not sure if that would even apply to the the tap, but again, because this is a physics thing, um, I just leave it unchecked for playing ashes. Shadow quality, I turn to low. Also, don't care about shadows. Um, we're not needing to cast shadows. It's not like we have miniature shadows or things like that that would really add to the environment. And then I keep everything else checked here, capping the frame rate. Um, <laughs> this just reduces... Uh, limits the FPS to monitor refresh rate to reduce the system usage. Great for laptops because I don't have a great machine. I think this has helped quite a bit in terms of overall. Um, you can come in here and remap controls. I don't recommend it because we're going to use a lot of the default shortcuts. And if you start changing these, then they're going to change on you. But maybe as you become a power user with TTS, you might want to change some things. Um, again, these are all things that you can turn off or on at your own, uh, as well as. Um, you know, if you wanted to change the pointer, um, any of those kinds of things. I do leave my visual mode on real. I'm not sure what these do. I've, I've not looked into them. It's not been a thing. Nothing on block. This is just going to be a few block users. Um, so, okay. So now that we got settings out of the way, for your first game, we're going to create. Um, and we're going to do a single player game for your first game. 
because we want to see if everything's working, number one, and you're probably going to need to build some decks. Okay, so as you can see here, because I use TTS a lot, the file Ashes Reborn TTS 1.1 shows up down here under the save load feature. And you're going to probably see the mod here, but if you don't, just hit the save load button and you'll get a folder pulls up that shows all of the saves that are on your uh, on your system. And then that's where you can uh, change, you know, to, to finding that Ashes Reborn TTS 1.1. So remember, we had that in our save objects folder mentioned earlier in the video. This is where you're going to load that. So once we load this, the, it's going to load the entire Ashes Reborn card pool as spoiled as of today. Obviously, um, no future sets are here because uh, we don't know anything about them yet, other than that time is coming, So, but there's no time die in this mod. So when the time stuff starts to come out, I'm sure that the folks that update this mod, uh, mainly Carl and team over on the Discord, um, they will, I'm sure, add time in, and we'll get a new mod. We'll get a new folder file, a new TTS table file, and we'll replace the old one with the new one and play off of the new one. Okay, so a couple of things. These are mostly the precons. I mean, obviously, these are not complete because a precon is um, thirty cards, and when you talk about the core Phoenix Born that were out, uh, those core Phoenix Born uh, didn't use all of this stuff, so you're gonna need to find resources on the precons. I believe there is a file folder with decks on the Discord channel under the Tabletop Simulator uh, looking for groups. So let's take a peek at that really fast. I'm gonna bring over our Discord here. Um, and when you look, uh, you'll see that there is this Tabletop Simulator look, not, yeah, Tabletop Simulator LFG looking for group. Little, little, I mean, obviously if you're new, that's a little confusing because you think that's people just looking for it. And, and I agree that, um, you know, maybe we need a separate TTS uh, channel or just rename the channel. But at the end of the day, this is where you're going to look for games, but it's also where you're going to find all the TTS stuff. And so you'll see this little pin up here for pin messages. And if you click on that, um, you will see here, uh, this is the Ashes Reborn TTS 1.1 JSON. Here's the older version. It had some bugs in it. Uh, I would not recommend downloading this version. Just get the newest version, which is located here from Wraith. It's uh, 11.25 of 2020 was when it was updated, and it was Ashes Reborn TTS 1.1. Uh, you can see Sigma today, at the time of this recording, had just added the pre-constructed decks as of January. So I'm going to follow that link for just a second. Um, so here you can see, here are all the JSONs for the various different TTS um, starting decks, so the precons. So these are the precons as they were laid out in 1.0, uh, just with the Reborn cards. So these are great just starting points, jumping off points. So if there's a Phoenix Born that you're kind of interested in, you know, maybe it's Koji or maybe it's, um, you know, Brennan or Namine or Saria, whatever, you can come in here and just grab the JSON file for this, load it back into the save folder where we are talking about, and then I'll show you how to load a deck here in just a second. So Again, this is um, this is something that you know you can go ahead and and um, you know use as a starting jumping off point. I would highly recommend it. Like I probably pay, played ten or fifteen games of Ashes just using the precons. Some of them don't line up really well against others, but um, for the most part, you know you you can see what each deck is trying to do, and you can learn how to play the game on a on a very fundamental level before you start trying to build your own decks. All right, so let's go back to Tabletop Simulator. So we kind of have an idea of, of now how to, how to get the base table loaded, how to um, import a deck into the save file structure. But let's, let's kind of talk about what I do if I'm going to play a game first, and then we'll talk about deck building after this. So to play a game, what I'll usually do is I'll click and drag to highlight cards. So this is sort of... And you can see now that all of these cards have a yellow symbol around them to indicate they're selected. And I'll hit G on my keyboard for group. And so that will take the entire card pool, all 284 cards, and group them together. And I'll just click on it, hold it, you'll see it pick up, right? So if you watch here, you see it kind of pop up like that. Uh, that's the physics engines that work for you. And that means I've got a hold of it. Now I can drag it around and I'll just drag it over here to the side of the table. 
The reason I do this is sometimes I'll make new players especially should do this too. You'll make a mistake and you'll accidentally delete a card. And you don't want to have to reload the whole tabletop simulator game. And some people try to rewind time. This sometimes works. Other times it's really wonky and can do some really funky things to your game. So if I'm like, oh crap, I just deleted a choke, I can just come in, I can right click on this deck of cards and I can click search. And now that I'm searching, I can just type in choke and guess what? There's, there's choke, card 197. So we're able to quickly replace cards that get deleted or get messed up. And it, it's, just, it's just a good backup. It's definitely not necessary, but it's just easy enough to do when you first come in. For the dice, um, little don't quite have the ability to group the dice. I'll show you what happens when we try to group dice. So I'm going to group the power cards. For your first few games, though, you know I would recommend putting the power cards in your deck builds because the first two games you're you're probably going to want to have them just you know down here somewhere uh, as a way of like just referencing. Okay, well I'm playing Charm Nature and and Ceremonial right now. Okay, well cool, I need those. Well, if you and your opponent are both new and need these as references. Um, I would recommend um, highlighting the card so you can just hover over the card and hit Control C and then hit Control V and you can make a copy of the card. And you can do that for all cards. So highlight over the card, Control C, Control V. It does have to be on the table. I can't Control C. I, if I Control V, I, I copy the entire deck. Uh, you can delete something by hitting delete. So, I mean, just a simple deletion. All of this is also available just if you right click, copy, and then. Um, you know, once you've copied, then you can come in here and just on an empty part of the table hit paste. So, and it gives you those links too. You can see control plus V, um, you know, it'd be command C, command V on Mac. Um, okay, so I'm gonna group the power, the, the reference cards up. That should cover reference cards. Let me know if you have questions on that, but I'm just gonna select the reference cards, group them, and I'm gonna set them to the side as well. Now I was gonna show you what happens when I try to group the dice. See, nothing happens because you can only group card only group objects that can be shuffled so you can't shuffle dice so you can't actually group these up well funny thing if you have them selected we'll, we'll take a card out here for a second number one you can see up here i have my rotation degree set at 90. i would encourage that um as a you can change it 15 30 45 9 60 90 but since ashes works in you know vertical or sideways position on cards for the phoenix borns those are the only cards that actually rotate in the game, then you know you can just do that. But then you can rotate the card by either going right click, rotate, right, or left. Or as you can see from the tooltips, Q or E on your keyboard. So E, U. And I use that all the time. And that matters when you look at these card, the dice, because they will rotate as well. So they'll rotate right, left, right, left. But you can see the dice do some funky things, right? Like they, they just, because they're not, they're not a, a two-dimensional object, they're a three-dimensional object in the sense that they don't operate on a, a 2D plane, but on, on a, you know, they have an X, Y, and a Z axis, essentially, that they can work off of. So if I need to move the dice out of the way, if, you're, if you select the dice and click them, you see how I have them all. If I'm moving and I hit the E button, you can see I can turn them all. They now move off the pivot point of my cursor. And so then I can just set them to the side and they're away from the plane surface. So now we've got the plane surface set up for our first game or our first deck. A um, couple of things, if you're new to Ashes, these are your damage counters. So another key thing to know about here in Ashes is the flip function. Uh, you'll use it quite a bit. So if I've got, um, if I hit the F key, I can flip the card over face down. You're not going to use that obviously in gameplay, but when you start returning conjurations back to your conjuration pile, you'll need to flip them. And I'll show you once we have a deck in place. But just know the F key flips. You can also do the same thing, right click and flip. So a couple of different options, just personal preference. Obviously, I like hotkeys. It makes the gameplay much smoother. Uh, and tokens are the same way. You have a one damage and a five damage. So if you're tracking damage and something's going to go bigger than five, uh, very rare, but if it does, then you can flip the one token over to the five. Um, the exhaustion token has no difference inside. It's just a one to one, but the status tokens are one and three. Um, so just um, just know that those things exist. You can see I'm just, so to pull these out, 
I hover over to like, you can see that little infinity symbol. I left click, but if I hold it down, I grab the whole thing. So I have to left click and drag right away. I don't want to, I don't want to hover over it and hold it because then I'm going to move the bag, right? So I just want to left click and drag and that'll drag out this. Now, if that is problematic for you or you're having trouble with it because maybe you don't have a mouse and you're using a touchpad on a laptop, the, the creator of the table has been nice enough to leave some tokens out. Super simple. Take the status token, control C, control V. We can make, you know, hundreds of these. So, you know, you can use that um, as, a, as a backup methodology to dragging from the bag if that serves a problem for you. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to put the root armor back now. Um, so we're ready to play our first game. I don't have an opponent for this, but I'm just gonna load a deck. So we go to objects, saved objects, and you'll see, remember I had a folder called Ashes Reborn Decks. If you don't, then you have uh, this. Mouse wheel on your, will scroll across multiple uh, different save files here. Uh, you can also click the two down here to go page two or the arrow to go to page two, lots of options. All of them are, you know, just whatever you prefer. Um, but since I have a folder called Ashes Reborn Decks, I'm going to click on that, and you can now see all of my Ashes decks that I have loaded into that folder. Uh, some of them have a little different symbols. It just depends on where they were created from. So some of these were created from um, pre-Ashes Reborn, and they were um, created off of Ashes.Live, which had a deck builder export to uh, TTS. And so it would create the JSON file right from Ashes.Live. Ashes.Live is a great website that uh, they're working on. I'll share it with you here. Um, you will want to bookmark this page because as you can see, the deck builder for Reborn is coming together and they are shooting for a late January 2021 on the deck builder for Reborn. Um, and then they'll open up commenting on decks and cards by 2021 and then have additional posting for people to uh, blog post to the the, to the site by February or March of 2021. You can also, if you if you really care about the legacy cards, there is a database still up of the legacy cards, but um, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Again, if you have questions on Ashes.Live, SCAC on Discord is leading this charge, and I would, I would tell you to reach out to him. Uh, he can help you with anything you're having trouble with on this site. But uh, if we just click on Reborn, you'll see it populates all the cards. Now, we can't build a deck from here, right? Like, that, that feature is not live yet, but it's getting close. But what it does is it allows us to do various filterings and things like that. So maybe we're looking for a particular card and a particular color, and then I'll go back to TTS and go, okay, I want to find it. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll show you two ways to do this. One way is the bag method. This way has got a few more steps. So you can see at the end of the day, my whole deck sits inside this bag. One of the nice things about this is that um, you can put the bag on the table if you're playing tournament and nothing's exposed yet. Uh, I, don't, I don't hate this as a, as a method, um, but it does have some downsides and I'll, I'll show you that in just a second. If you wanna do this, uh, I'll show you how you have to save it here in just a second. So I start clicking and dragging out of the bag just like I did before. So I get my conjuration pile. Um, and again, in order to move the whole deck, you have to have the card. Uh, you have to hold it down until it's, it's dragging with you. If you just click and drag, I'm going to pull the top card off. Um, so there's the deck. And then there's the Phoenix Born. But now I have a bag of dice. And I just have to drag 10 times to get 10 dice out. Um, one of the cool things you can do if you get your dice all separated out, I'll show you here. I don't use this very often, but you can you can just shake your mouse to gather them up and then let it go and they'll explode out. <laughs> uh, but it makes a mess and I'm not a big fan of that because it has to do with the physics and how the physics interact and um, it, it can be pretty crazy. So I'm not a big fan of that as a as a way of gathering dice. I just try to put them together as nicely as possible. And I just delete the bags, and now I'm ready to play. Okay, so that's one way to do the bags. Now, if I want to save this as a bag, it's where it gets a little tricky. I have to go to Objects, Components. Uh, it's called Miscellaneous. Nope, not Miscellaneous. I'm telling you wrong. Objects, Components, Tools, Bag. 
and you spawn a bag. And again, because I want to have, um, you know, I can I can put all ten in there, but again, they're only going to come out one at a time. And then I can add these on top, and they'll come out in the reverse order that you put them in. So I put the ten in there, put the Phoenix Born in, put the deck in, put that in, and you can see as I reverse it, they come out the same way, right? Okay. So we've got that. That's one way to do the bag. Now, once you have it saved, you just go to right click and you do save object. It's going to give you a prompt folder. If you go to the root folder, the root folder is the base save file folder where the table mod is. Or if you've done like I have and you have a folder for your decks, then you want to click the drop down and change to whatever your folder name is. Change the name and hit save and it will save the JSON file for you. That's it. That's how you do that. It's really simple. Um, Nothing too fancy going on there. Okay. So another way that I prefer, uh, as I've done more and more of these videos, uh, let me sort of line things up, um, is a lot of times I'll build Ashes decks with a, a particular color in mind. Like this Mayoni deck is predominantly sympathy. So because it's predominantly sympathy, um, Maybe I'm setting myself up and jinxing myself by putting them all on basic sides, but I'm just having a little fun. And I can show you how to do that too. So really quick before we show how to save this. Um, you don't have to have them close, but I do like them close. Um, one, like one, two, three, four, five, six will change the dice face. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and then six. So you can quickly, you know, um, if you're meditating and you know what you're meditating to, you can just hit, most often you're gonna to go to power, so you can just hit the six button, go right to power. You don't have to like figure out how to turn the dice. Like you can rotate, um, uh, rotation value, you can see here, you can right click and do that and then it, you know it will prompt you, but it's easy enough. One and two are basics, so one is I always use for basics. I always use four for power or for class and six for power. and that will be just an easy way to get your dice on facing sides that you need to uh, at any given time. Okay, it's really helpful if your opponent's gonna roll a die down one level, um, you're gonna roll a die up one level, like you, you, know, you can just, you just know one, four, and six are gonna get it all done for you. Um, okay, now I was gonna tell you the other way to save, so I, can, I have them all highlighted, I right click and hit save object, and I'm gonna go ahead and do Ashes Reborn decks, and I'm just gonna call this Mayoni Test, and hit Save. Okay, the Mayoni Test has now been saved in my Ashes Reborn folder. I go to Objects, Saved Objects, Ashes Reborn. You can see it pulled the Sympathy die for, the, for an image. And I kinda like this because it, if, if I've got a bunch of different Mayoni decks, and maybe some of them are nature, more nature-based, or more charm-based, or whatever it may be, then I can just see, oh yeah, cool. Um, I'm gonna delete this and show you what it looks like when it spawns in, because I also like that a ton. So I'm just gonna go, okay, I'm gonna drop it, and guess what? It looks exactly how I had it set up. So I can then just grab this, grab this, rotate it, and I'm ready to go. So I prefer this methodology of saving versus the bag method, but the bag method is viable, and if you prefer putting all your stuff in bags, go for it. You can color code your bags, you can do all kinds of stuff. I'll let you play around with that. Um, I'm not gonna go into sort of those usability features because they're just, they're not necessary. They just become uh, things you can toy around with. Okay, so now we're ready to play our first game, which involves getting our first five. So the way I get my first five, some people like to load the top five cards of their deck. So if you preset the deck with the five cards that are gonna be your first five, then you can just go right click and draw and go one, two, three, four, five, and you've got your five cards. There's a faster way to do that, uh, like everything in Tabletop Simulator. I'm just gonna group that back up. You see I put five cards, I can just drop five cards back on. Now, really quick, if the card is like this, and I try to put it on there, it's just gonna sit on top. It's not gonna shuffle in. It's just sitting on top of the deck. If I flip it so that it's lined up, it shuffles back into the deck. And again, flipping is just kind of how we do all that. Okay, so what I like to do is I'll go search 
I'll find my first five and I'll just start dragging them down to the bottom of my screen. And that'll put them all into my hand, just like so. I'll highlight, just like I just did, where I'll click and drag and highlight and hit F, and now there's my five cards. This way, I can keep the deck organized, um, and there's a couple of reasons I like to keep the deck organized personally. That's so I can see the card counts. So if you look at my decks, generally you'll see like, okay, there's three copies of Change Psyche, two Adrenaline, two Flute Mage. I've pulled some cards out, so it's not going to line up any longer, and we were messing around, but like, I can organize it before I save it with the numbers of copies. And in doing that, then if I want to modify this deck later, like I have a really good snapshot of all the cards in the deck and the quantities. I don't have to lay the whole deck out. I can just use the search deck function, which is the right, you just right click and hit search. Okay. Now, the other thing to do is like as you get from round to round. Okay. So now we understand the first five. I'm going to put these back for now. Um, let's. You, to shuffle, you can right click and shuffle, um, which is right here. Or as you can see, the hotkey R will do it. That's what I usually use. And you can just hit R a few times, shuffles the deck. Okay. Now, when you go into, say, round two, and you're not going to pick cards out to drag to your hand, instead of right clicking and drawing, like we were mentioning, you can just hit the five key when you're hovering over the deck, and you'll draw five cards. If a card tells you to draw one, super simple. Like just hover over the deck, hit one, boom, got a, got a single card added. So the, the number keys work not only on the dice for the purposes of, um, for that, but they also work uh, for, for drawing cards from the deck. All right, so remember group is G, flip, and then click and drag, and we can put it right back, right back. Okay, so let's talk about rolling dice then. Rolling dice works exactly the same way as shuffling cards. You can right click and hit roll. But you can see it doesn't it doesn't really do a great job, right? Like it like the physics engine is is tight enough that like the dice aren't heavy enough to get a lot of height on them. And so you can get some really wonky results. Like obviously very unlikely that you're gonna roll eight basics, right? So what I would usually do is I will just hit R a few times, that'll keep the dice spinning. We just want to get that physics engine working and we get a nice spread. Um seems to be the closest way for us to simulate real dice rolling. Obviously, it's, it, it is a simulator. It is not uh, perfect. And certainly, you know, I think, like anything, there, you know, there's algorithms involved in that process, and the shuffler is determining what side they're supposed to fall. Now, something that can happen a lot is, uh, let's see if I can recreate it. It's really difficult, but it does happen. Yeah, so, so see how we've got a dice that couldn't settle in because there wasn't enough room on the table for it. But you're going, well, what side is it on? I mean, we don't know, right? And so you can either re-roll it, or I like to just hover over it, and I'll tell you what side it's on. So if you hover over it, it'll say, oh, it's power. Okay, well, cool. I'll just hit the six button, and it'll settle in. Or I can grab it. The other thing I can do, let's see if I can recreate that. Yeah, I got I to gotta tighten up the space a little bit. Uh, it's going to be tricky. It's, it's so funny how much this happens when you're, you're not trying to have it happen, and then you just can't necessarily recreate it. But anyways, if you just click the die and pick it up to move it like this, it will set down on its correct side uh, as well. So there's a couple of different ways to approach that, but you can just, again, hover over it. It'll tell you what side it's supposed to be on. That tells you whether to hit 1, 4, 6, and you're good to go. Okay. Um, let's see. I mean, that's pretty much it. Like, obviously, just clicking and dragging dice is the same way as you click and drag anything. You click it, hold it, and move it. If you just grab it, right, if you just go, you're going to just roll it, you don't want to do that. So you want to click, drag, and move to spend the die. Okay. So I think you get the function, basic functions now of how to play a game on TTS. Let's talk a little bit about, um, and we've talked about how to save a deck. Um, but I, I want to talk just a little bit about how I deck build. And that really involves this and going back to Ashes Live. And I'm not going to give you deck building tips per se, but I just, um, I just want to reiterate that essentially I don't, I don't have any of these dice. So I'm going to delete this deck out. I would be sitting with a blank slate. I have all of these dice up here as sort of my reference dice for um, whatever I'm doing. But let's say I just know I want to build uh, you know, a Noah deck. Because I just lost to Carl and Noah today, um, you know I think that's 
something that uh, what I would do is I'd first go, I'd go search and I would look for Noah, find Noah and I drag him out. But what a lot of times what I like to do is make a copy. And the reason I like to make a copy is that keeps Noah in here. Um, you know, I don't have to reload the table. So if I wanted to build multiple decks in a single sitting, I keep all my cards still in here and I just made a copy of Noah through the control C, control V commands. And so now I can decide, okay, well, maybe I want to summon Noah's wolves. So I want masked wolves. I'll just type in masked. Okay, there's the wolf. And there's the book for the wolf. And so I'll go, okay, there's five. If you look at the bottom left-hand corner of the card, there's a little number down there that says five. That's the conjuration count. So that's how many copies of the conjuration need to exist in your in your conjuration pile. So I'll go one, two, three, four, five, because I know I'm gonna need five copies of that for the deck. I'll slide that back on top, and then I'll go, okay, well, I'm gonna run three books, let's say. So I'll make three copies of the book, and I'll just put it down here, slide the book back on top. I just keep doing this, right? And then ultimately, you have to build a 30 card deck. So when you get to 30 cards, you're in a position where you've still got this full 284 card pool set, so I don't have to re-prep a table, and I can move on to deck number two or three or four, because sometimes I get in deck building moods. You may not be like that, and you may just want to be like, okay, great, like, let's just go, right? Okay, cool, no problem. Um, your choice on how you want to do that. But um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's really all I do. If you do delete the cards or use these core cards, and then, you know, you don't have any back over here, it's no big deal. Just save your deck when you're done. And then uh, reload the table, and you're good to go. So you just have to re remove everything off the table again. It takes a couple of extra seconds. I just like, I just like I said, I like to build multiple decks, and so I'll do that by sitting in a single spot to do that, and not getting rid of this card pool. Um, I mean, that's pretty much TTS in a nutshell. I'm probably missing something. Oh, we should show you really quick. Um, I should just show you really quick how to create a multiplayer game so you understand the settings of multiplayer. So you hit create and hit multiplayer. You set up a server name. You set up a password and you can set the max number of players. So if you if you or you and a friend are playing, you don't want anybody else to interrupt you. Drag that down to max player two and nobody else can join the join even if they guess a password. Like obviously we, we don't have super secret passwords in the Ashes community for most of our games. But if you want to invite people to come watch, you can set it at eight or six or, you know, whatever number you're comfortable with. Do you know that the more people that get into the room, the more TTS can be problematic? So if you have a, a kind of a machine that's a little bit less performance heavy, I probably wouldn't tell you to go much over six. I usually set it at about six. You're probably not going to get more than four spectators ever anyways. But um, yeah, and then you can set the server type as well. So public just means that it's browsable. Um, friends just mean only your friends on TTS can see it and invite is only people you invite can see it. I just leave all three selected because I've got a password and since I have a password that keeps 90% of the, the riffraff out as we will. Um, so if you're, uh, if you're wanting to join a, uh, a multiplayer game, um, you hit not create, but join pretty easy. And I set a filter up here for Ashes, and you can see here, here's Age of Ashes, Game Age of Ashes. So this isn't, this isn't Ashes. <laughs> Nobody's playing Ashes currently on Tabletop Simulator, it looks like. But um, if it was, then you would be able to um, just click here. This is password protected, so you would need the password to get in. It tells you whether they're looking for players. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, but it just tells you who the host is, how many players. So when you're setting it up through LFG, you can try to use the host name, but do keep in mind sometimes the Discord names and the host names are different. So you may have to ask back in Discord, is this you? Um, you can also turn off hide full, which just means that if an Ashes server is like full, like if you set your Ashes server to two of two, right, and it's you and your friend playing and somebody else tried to join, they wouldn't see it if you if they selected hide full. You can also change it to friends only so that you can reduce the the filter. You can also hide locked, but I would not recommend hide locked because almost everybody who plays Ashes doesn't play in an unpassword protected room. So hide locked would just change the filter um, amount in such a way where you probably won't ever see any games online. Um, if you don't see anything and you know somebody's supposed to be posting a game, you can also refresh. You can watch it counting back up and checking all the different public servers and uh, trying to find games. So. 
that's pretty much TTS in a nutshell. It's not really a complicated program. It's it does have a learning curve, a comfortability. You'll get more comfortable with it as you play games. So don't get too super frustrated over it. Just do your best um, to start playing some games with people. Everybody in the community is super nice. I think they'll do a great job of, of helping you through. And if you have questions about this video, like I said, put them in the comments below. Uh, join our Discord server and talk to us there, whatever you prefer. And we will be back. You know, we, we stream Ashes every Thursday night. And lately we've been kind of surprised streaming them on Wednesday nights. Traditionally, Wednesday nights, we, we spread the wealth a little bit with different games, and then we play Ashes on Thursday. But, um, yeah, we're, we're happy to sit back and chat with you. Feel, feel free to join us on Twitch on one of those nights if you want to learn more about the game, talk about metas and cards and, and strategies. Uh, we do most of that discussion on Thursday nights with our audience, and we will see you hopefully sometime soon in a new video. Thanks so much for checking out TTS and Ashes. I'm Jesse with the Shuffle Bus. We'll see you soon.